GP Industria e Artiginato is an absolute classic Italian one-day race. Now, you can see there on the screen, basically very lumpy. I might not cut all of it, but San Boronto is the climb, 8.6 kilometers at 3.5%, but it's rampy. We've got James Knox on the front for Mary Van Sevenens. We've got Lander here. We've got Nibali. We've got Quintana. We've got everyone. We've got Carlos Rodriguez for Ineos. We've got Edith Schelling. There's a lot of big names, and uh, it's a really exciting race. I've done coverage of this before with Matteo Mohoric when he won on a solo break. So after the climb, uh, there's about seven kilometers downhill and then sort of a, a flat and then punchy finish. So basically really suits a climber, but if it's like ridden really aggressively, this climb, but can also suit a solo breakaway person. But James Knox here is really just absolutely launching it. I'm really trying to set up Van Seven and who, if you haven't seen my Trofeo Leguel yet, I'll have it up here. Um, it's a really similar race in some regards. That It's an Italian one-day hilly race um, and a sort of a finish. And Molima obviously uh, won that. So if you haven't seen that, sorry for ruining it. Uh, but he went, so we went early. But this time, I think they realized that Van Seven was really good in good forms. James Knox has also been doing pretty well as well. He came sixth, I think, in La Guelia and Van Sevenens was fourth, just behind, no, third, sorry, just behind Bernal, uh, who won that sprint. And the thing is with this climb is you really need to ride it aggressively because otherwise, you know, if you're a non-climber, you can easily recover, not easily, but you can recover on these slight downhills sort of below threshold and then just punch it again. So if you're someone like, let's say, Van Aert uh, or Van Der Poel, someone like that, they can just punch it and then have a little recovery and go again. Um, but they wanted to make it really, really hard. And you can see Nido Man, 13.4 kilometers to go, not long on the climb left, really. And he decides it's time to go. And Ma uh, Van Seven is the only one who can follow straight away. And this is absolute pure peak Nido Man when he's just on the attack like this, saddle out, out the saddle, absolutely flying. And this is why I love Italian one-day races, because people are aggressive, people attack. You can see Eddie Dunbar for Ineos behind. He also had quite a good race uh, at Trofeo La Guelia before he blew up after his attack. Um, on, on the final climb there. And he's trying to lead it back, but you, I mean, it's not gonna happen. With Nido Man and Van Sevenen is just looking so, so strong. I believe he's only 21 years of age and he is looking absolutely flying. Uh, really, really good form. And it's good that Quick Step, to be fair, have realized this and just drilled it for him. But I thought at this point, he, he could be struggling a bit. It looks like a gap slightly coming uh, between him and he's really, really struggling out the saddle. But Nido Man just, on these, when he's on his day and he attacks like this, you just know that it's going to be so, so hard um, for anyone really to come round or anyone to do anything else, but just try and hang on for as long as possible. For him, he's got to go solo because he's not going to win a bunch of sprint against really anyone. Um, and also, like, he's not realistically... Um, going to be able to like ride solo really either so like so he has to ride solo but he also isn't a top top well he's a top descender but he's not the biggest guy and there's a little bit of pedaling on this descent so he definitely is a decent margin as well he can't just roll over the top like five seconds and and maybe go like maybe Nibali could do because he's such a good descender um but here like, it really looks like he's um getting dropped but it comes across just in the background is Mikael Lander and Balka Mollema and they're absolutely flying across as well uh, I think that obviously they were just expecting their teammates to try and close the gap but that wasn't going to happen Pelo Bilbao was the teammate uh, for Mikael Lander uh, and also obviously N uh, Nibali and Ciccone were there for Balka Mollema and they, they come across this gap as well like not as uh, quick as maybe they could have done, but still pretty strong. As we as always, Molima is out. But again, for Molima, for all these guys, they're all not really sprinters, are they? Like, let's be honest. Um, then they had a very similar sprint uh, in La Guelia. There was Van Seven is there. There was Lander there. Obviously, Molima was up the road. But you think so? They sort of know each other's sprints more or less. So it becomes a very tactical battle because they're all known really for climbing. Uh, Molima, okay, is, is a bit of a bigger rider. Definitely is definitely strong in the TT, for instance. But you really think like from here, like who would you back? Like no one, which is why it's such an interesting proposition because it's not very often that you see people like this who are essentially pure climbers really going on the attack. And now they come over the top here and this is the four who have really made it. And no one else is really going to come with them, to be honest. There's Okay, there's, there, there are some strong climbers behind. People I thought who would do a lot better was maybe uh, Biniam Grame. I thought he would have slightly better. It's just too hilly for him. Uh, and then, like, all I, I also had Hater in my fantasy team expecting that him to do a little bit better. Uh, but unfortunately, that was not the case. So, with Vinci with the Trek people behind, there was Ciccone and Nibali. Carlos Rodriguez, really, really rate him. He had such a good ride in Provence. And that really, I guess, put everyone's, like, eyes to him. Because he signed for Ineos for five years. He's actually at uni now, studying engineering. Mad. Uh, and he, yeah, he's really 
I mean, he's not that's Dunbar in the front, but he was looking really, really strong in the group behind. And I, I was surprised, I guess, how good he was potentially. Um, the other people like Edith Schelling as well. He's a bit of a bigger rider, a bit more of a, a sprinter type. And obviously Valverde as well. And you might say, Charlie, why do you not talk about Valverde? I, I think he's gone. Uh, and I don't like to say it, but I, I think he is. Skip forward a little bit here, just 10k to go. And the descent here, it's, it's technical. I'd say I'd say it's like definitely one where you can put time into people uh, is a little bit of pedaling, I guess, towards the top. So there's Carlos Rodriguez second wheel. And this is where we go through. So you've got uh, Ida Shea, Matteo Fabro, a very small climber from Italy. Uh, Seth Fasson, uh, who is um, or he rides for Andrade Giacattoli. I think he signed new this year, um, Eritrean lad. Uh, and then you've also got, uh, who, I don't know who else I missed. We've got Nibli, I think it was, uh, who was on the list. Um, and obviously Nibali for me shouldn't pull and Nibali was pulling and I thought that was very controversial because okay in this group okay Mono is not his favorite for sure but then behind you've just got more riders you've got like one or two Ineos riders that group ends up actually splitting up I think on the descent uh, which we'll see it's sort of hard because they they have helicopters but then they didn't have a helicopter for the end which was a bit weird uh, which we'll get we'll get to in the future uh, so it's sort of hard to tell exactly what was going on the whole time but on this descent, I mean, the, the front four guys all need, really need to work. Um, but I always think about this in terms of tactics. Like, if you're Van Seven, and what happens if you just sat on? Like, what happens if you just said, okay, I'm not going to pull? Uh, like, here's, I don't understand why Trekker on the front here. Like, okay, Nibley's a very good descender, but that's just going to help everyone else. That's not going to, like, tire them out. That's not going to ruin their chase. Like, I, I didn't think that was good. I think he should have just either, you know, sat fourth, fifth wheel and just let everyone you know, in front of him take the descent or, or just not do it at all. Um, because, to be honest, like, there's no way that them bringing everyone back in the fold is good. Like Valverde surely is going to dust them all if it comes back to a sprint. So like, why would you do that? But anyway, we're going to skip quite a lot forward because once the descent wasn't actually crazy and with 3.6 kilometers to go, it's pretty obvious that with a 20 second gap, they're not going to get, get, get brought back um, at all because it's just not really, the running is literally like 1K, one and a half kilometers. And on this descent at the moment, okay, it's not like, you know, as I said before, it's technical, but it's not like 24 seconds in uh, in like a kilometer or three kilometers technical ish. So we've got these guys out front, and realistically, I think you've got to you've got to sit on now. You, you've got to just pray that everyone else is motivated to work, uh, and you've also got to remember that you don't want to be the first one to go in a non-sprint bunch. If you're going to lead out, I don't, I just don't think that's necessarily one um, to do. Uh, in terms of looking behind them, I don't know. I feel like with 23 seconds to back you go, you just you can't. You can't think anyone's going to cross that gap. Maybe they could, maybe they couldn't. But you just got to, you just got to think. No, we've got to commit fully. Um, obviously, a bit of super talk. I don't really understand why they don't just ban it from one day instead of saying, "Oh, it's banned, but you can still do it." And then some comma says allow it, and apparently others don't. But anyway, the super talk is faster. Moric, I've also put the video somewhere there. Unreal. Uh, one of the best performances I've seen on the de descent. But Nibali's pulling now. It's like, what are you doing? Do you want? Do you want Valverde to win? Do you want him to win? Because then pull. And that seems to be the thing. Anyway, Valverde gets off the front here, two kilometers to go. It's really ticking down. The time gap, again, hasn't come down that much. But obviously, this is the final right-hand corner. So they've come off the descent now. It's now basically flat until... Flat or false flat. Um, I'd say, yeah, it probably is slightly false flat to the finish. And there's a decent kick up. And then maybe with 50 meters to go, it's flat. Uh, so it's really, you know, sort of leave it late sprint for me because on the climb, you're not going to put a huge, huge gap, but it's just over the top. You've got 50 meters to go. If you've got a big punch there, uh, then you're definitely going to do it. And people are still pulling very strong turns. I guess for Molima, he's just got to keep it hard. Probably, I'd say on paper, he's definitely the least explosive person. I then say like, you know, probably Lander, Quintana, Van Seven, and they're all pretty small. I don't know. I mean, they're all going to attack on a climb, but like they're going from like 400 to like 600 watts and that's curious the separation. It's not like they're doing, you know, 1200 watt sprints. Well, I think Molima, yeah, he's well, he got some issues with SRAM again. Unlucky, poor boy. I've had many issues with SRAM as well. So, you know, big feelings. But anyway, Edith Schelling launches a huge attack. The gaps come down to 14 seconds somehow because they were messing around. And Edith Schelling, I was like, oh, yeah, this could be it because he is going to come across really, really quickly. Like, because they are messing around completely. Like they're, they look like they're going quite quick, but they're soft tapping. They're doing like 200 watts-ish, like max. So Ida Shagun's going to come across and he's going to go straight away. And all of them sh like are going to fan across the road and just look. And this is the biggest error that Lander does all day. Lander's looking around, Lander's looking around. You've got to wait. You've just got to gamble and hope that someone like goes with Shelling. If you're the one to go, that's race over. He starts his sprint now. It's about 400 meters to go. 
Very, very stupid idea. He then gets on the wheel and he's basically just helping everyone out. And it's like, it just, okay, maybe he wanted a long sprint, then it makes sense. But for me, it was really, really stupid because now he's chasing that down. Shelling's about a blow. Shelling can't hold this because I said it's a, it's a steep uphill and then it flattens off. So Lander's basically just let everyone out. Now Molema comes around. Now they're going to zoom out a little bit, but just keep your eyes on the Ryan side of the road. Either Shelling, um, sorry, Mario Van Seven is absolutely flying on the Ryan side. I knew it would be him. He almost beat Bernal. He's got a very good kick and he does the same here. Just really, really strong. And actually wins it by a long way. And you can see here, he comes out of the wheel and then just punches it. He doesn't look pretty, but that boy has a good kick at the end of the day and can climb very, very well. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video and we will see you in the next one.